John Diddy Combs, a household name in the music industry, is now entangled in a web of allegations, legal battles, and criminal investigations that have rocked both his personal and professional life. These accusations are not merely isolated incidents, but suggest a deeply embedded system of corruption, abuse, and illegal activity, all allegedly facilitated by his immense wealth. As Diddy faces charges related to sex trafficking, racketeering, and exploitation, the financial elements of his empire are under scrutiny, shedding light on how wealth can be weaponized to maintain power and control. In this video, we'll dive deeper into how P. Diddy's extreme wealth and fame is alleged to have facilitated so much corruption and crime, but please bear in mind that everything I discuss here are simply allegations. Diddy has not yet stood trial on these charges, so I'm not claiming any of these statements to be fact, but rather at this point, I'm just reporting on the allegations. Let's look at a timeline of allegations and the legal battles. The allegations against Diddy have spanned several years, culminating in his arrest in September 2024. However, the roots of his legal troubles stretch back much further, beginning with accusations from former partners and colleagues. For example, in late 2023, Diddy's ex-girlfriend Cassie Ventura filed a lawsuit accusing him of sexual assault and domestic violence. The lawsuit was swiftly settled with no admission of guilt from Diddy, but it set the stage for a cascade of legal actions that followed. The case involving Cassie Ventura and Sean Diddy Combs became a catalyst for exposing some of the deeper, darker aspects of Diddy's alleged misconduct. Cassie, who dated Diddy for over a decade, filed a lawsuit in late 2023 accusing him of sexual abuse, domestic violence, and control through financial coercion. According to Cassie, Diddy used drugs, physical violence, and emotional manipulation to dominate her over the years, and he forced her into dangerous situations, including parties where alleged illegal activities occurred. Cassie's lawsuit painted a picture of Diddy as a controlling figure who maintained a stranglehold over her life. She alleged that he introduced her to drugs, subjected her to violent outbursts, and involved her in exploitative activities, including being coerced into sexual situations that she did not consent to. The lawsuit alleged that Diddy's immense wealth played a crucial role in his abuse as he reportedly used his financial influence to control her movement, her career, and even the people around her. The case took a significant turn when just one day after the lawsuit was filed, it was reported that Diddy had reached a settlement with Cassie, although the details of the settlement were not made public. It is believed to have been a large financial payout, effectively silencing the case and preventing it from moving forward in court. This swift settlement is emblematic of a broader pattern seen in Diddy's other legal battles. Using his vast financial resources to settle accusations quietly, keeping damaging information from public scrutiny. This use of money to settle legal disputes not only highlights the power dynamics in play, but in my opinion, it also raises questions about the broader implications of wealth in situations of abuse and corruption. If Diddy paid large sums of money to his accusers, then those payments allowed him to avoid the potentially devastating impact of a public trial. Such settlements can function as a form of bribery, effectively silencing witnesses and victims in exchange for financial compensation. In Cassie's case, it is believed by some that money was used to ensure that the full extent of Diddy's alleged abuse and misconduct never reached the courtroom, allowing him to continue his career and public life without facing any direct consequences. However, this settlement only sparked more accusations from other individuals who had been part of Diddy's circle, claiming that similar patterns of abuse and exploitation were common. As more alleged victims began to come forward, Diddy's financial strategies, both his public investment and his private payouts, came under intense scrutiny, revealing how he may have used his fortune to bury his wrongdoing. Cassie's case served as a public reminder of how extreme wealth may in some cases be used not only to perpetuate crimes, but also to cover them up, which in my opinion can create a cycle of abuse that remains hidden behind NDAs and financial settlements. Following Cassie Ventura's 2023 lawsuit, several other claims emerged against Diddy. One of the most prominent was a lawsuit filed by Rodney or Lil Rod Jones, a former producer who accused Diddy of sexual harassment, drugging, and threats during his time working with the mogul from 2022 to 2023. Jones alleged that Diddy organized parties involving sex trafficking, underage girls, and illegal drugs. Other women also came forward with similar accusations, describing coercion and exploitation, echoing the themes of manipulation and financial control. By early 2024, Diddy faced multiple lawsuits, all alleging sexual misconduct, harassment, and involvement in trafficking networks. These claims painted a picture of a powerful individual using his wealth to manipulate, exploit, and control those around him. 
His financial resources were once again alleged to have been used to silence victims through settlements and coercion, allegedly perpetuating his illegal activity without him having to face public scrutiny. Details regarding any actual monetary settlements for these cases were not always disclosed, but in many cases, Diddy's legal team managed to resolve disputes before they escalated into full trials, which I believe reflects a broader strategy of using wealth, power, and coercion to handle accusations and perpetuate a crime ring. In March 2024, Diddy was under intense scrutiny from federal investigators who raided his home in Los Angeles and Miami. The raids uncovered illegal weapons and then allegations soon surfaced that these investigations were part of a larger effort to dismantle a sex trafficking network allegedly connected to Diddy. Several high profile lawsuits followed with multiple women and former associates accusing Diddy of sexual harassment, drugging and involvement in organized sex trafficking activities. On September 16, 2024, Diddy was arrested in New York and the next day the charges were made public. He was accused of racketeering, sex trafficking by force, fraud, and coercion, as well as transporting individuals for the purpose of prostitution. Now, racketeering conspiracy is an accusation of leading a criminal enterprise to engage in illegal activities. Sex trafficking by force, fraud, or coercion is allegedly organizing and participating in sex trafficking networks using financial coercion and manipulation. Then the charge of transportation to engage in prostitution is where he's being accused of transporting individuals across state lines for prostitution. And then he's also arrested for illegal possession of firearms, which were discovered during a federal raid in early 2024. And it is alleged that these were linked to a broader alleged criminal network. Evidence supporting these charges includes testimony from multiple victims and former associates, along with material seized during federal raids in his Los Angeles and Miami properties. Investigators uncovered illegal weapons and incriminating documents, and several witnesses have reportedly provided detailed accounts of parties where exploitation occurred, including underage trafficking and drug use. Evidence reportedly also includes video footage that is claimed to support some of the allegations. In particular, in Jones's lawsuit, Jones mentioned that they possessed a video and audio recording of Diddy and his associates engaging in illegal activities, including sex trafficking, drug use, and exploitation at parties Diddy organized. The FBI's investigation has relied on witness testimonies and material evidence seized during the raids, but no details about direct video evidence from the raids have actually been confirmed. These recordings are believed to be a significant part of the evidence presented against Diddy in the ongoing investigation. This type of evidence is critical in sex trafficking and racketeering cases as it provides tangible proof of the accused's involvement in illegal actions. The use of such footage along with testimonies from victims could further corroborate the charges and reinforce the allegations of coercion and exploitation. However, it's important to note that Diddy's legal team has denied the authenticity and accuracy of these claims, stating that the allegations are baseless and part of an attempt to defame him. As the legal process unfolds, certain video evidence may play a pivotal role in determining the outcome of the case. Diddy's attempts to secure bail with a staggering $50 million proposal were rejected as the courts expressed concern that his wealth and influence would enable him to tamper with witnesses and manipulate the outcome of any potential trial. This marked critical turning point in the unraveling of Diddy's empire where his financial power could no longer shield him from justice. At the heart of these allegations is the role that Diddy's immense wealth played in facilitating and perpetuating his alleged criminal activities. As a billionaire, Diddy wielded extraordinary financial power and according to multiple claims, he used this power to control, exploit, and silence those around him. The structure of his wealth spread across various business ventures, real estate holdings, and luxury assets allowed him to operate a lifestyle that was not only extravagant, but allegations suggest deeply corrupt. Of course, his extreme fame as an A-list celebrity also contributed to his influence and power that allegedly allowed him to coerce his victim. Now, one of the key elements in the allegations against Diddy is the way his wealth allegedly allowed him to maintain a network of people complicit in his illegal activities. This network is believed to have included personal assistants, security personnel, and even other celebrities who were reportedly either paid off or threatened into silence. Financial incentives were reportedly used to lure victims into situations where they could be exploited, with underage girls allegedly trafficked to private parties organized by Diddy. Many argue that the sheer scale of his wealth enabled him to keep this network running with little fear of exposure as he could afford to settle lawsuits or buy silence whenever necessary. In the music industry, Diddy's financial success was legendary. He founded Bad Boy Records in the 1990s, which grew into a massive entertainment conglomerate, earning him millions. But this same success, according to allegations, provided the cover for darker, more illegal endeavors. 
By amassing considerable influence through his financial success, Diddy allegedly created an environment where others felt pressured to comply with his demands, fearing financial or career repercussions if they resisted. In addition to the recurring theme and allegations against Diddy regarding his alleged use of financial settlements to buy silence of his victims, non-disclosure agreements were another weapon in Diddy's arsenal. By requiring individuals, both victims and employees, to sign NDAs, Critics argue that he effectively tried to insulate himself from potential whistleblowers. They further argue that these agreements, backed by threat of legal and financial penalties, ensured that many of his alleged crimes remained hidden from public view for years. Now, beyond sex trafficking and personal misconduct, Diddy's charges also include allegations of racketeering, which involve using his financial resources to engage in illegal business activities. The racketeering charges suggest that Diddy's business empire itself may have been tainted by corruption, with illegal money laundering operations and fraudulent business dealings potentially playing a role in his wealth accumulation. By allegedly using his wealth to manipulate financial systems, it is argued that Diddy created a network of businesses that on the surface appeared legitimate but may have been used to facilitate darker dealings. Such businesses, which included real estate holdings and entertainment ventures, can provide a perfect cover for hiding illicit funds and ensuring that illegal profits were well integrated into the broader financial empire. Now, as the legal battle continues to unfold, one thing is clear, Diddy's wealth, once a symbol of his success, has now become central to his undoing. The very financial empire that protected him for decades has drawn the attention of investigators and prosecutors who are now using his immense wealth as evidence of his involvement in organized crime. It is being argued that Diddy's ability to buy silence, maintain power, and manipulate was part of the larger narrative of alleged corruption that involves not only sex trafficking, but also financial crimes on a massive scale. The allegations against Sean Diddy Combs reveal how extreme wealth can corrupt and enable systemic abuses of power. His financial empire, built on the success of his music and business ventures, allegedly provided him with the means to exploit others and avoid accountability. The ongoing legal proceedings are not just about Diddy's alleged personal misconduct, but about how wealth and influence can fuel corruption on a scale that transcends individual actions, implicating an entire network of enablers. As his empire seemingly crumbles, it serves as a cautionary tale of how dark money can underpin even the most glittering public persona. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this about the world of dark money or other financial related videos, you should be sure to subscribe to my channel down below and you should watch this next video over here, which YouTube thinks you're really going to enjoy.